Welcome to the Featured Anime Podcast. I'm your host, Jack. And I'm Rick. And today we are talking about, uh, I want to eat your pancreas, but not literally, metaphorically speaking, Rick. I want to eat your pancreas. But also kind of literally. Yeah, sure. But before that, we were talking about, you know, some some changes and things like that that are going on, uh, how... Express Yourself is a, both a song and a literal expression in my house, and just some other wonderful little tidbits about Star Wars and our viewpoints on that, and how Rick deals in absolutes, and I do not deal with absolutes. There's only doing or do not, but no try. You want to catch a part of that wider conversation? Patreon.com slash Featured Anime Podcast. A dollar a month will get you access to that bonus content and more. Now, on to the meat and potatoes. Don't you mean the pancreas and potatoes? Uh, no, not really. But just that's they, you... it's a meat that they consume. Okay. Well, anyways, uh, the producers for this was Aniplex and ABC Animation. Studio for the Studio uh, Volan. It's based off of a novel. Uh, it is a movie, and it came out in September 2018, uh, and the genres for it are drama, romance, slice of life, and it ran for about an hour 48 minutes, which I feel was uh, an appropriate length for the movie. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't, unless you watch live action, and of course, yeah, two minutes was too much. <laughs> right. Yeah, which, which uh, uh, part of our pre-conversation we did talk about how there is actually a live action version of this movie too which neither one of us thankfully have seen yet <laughs> yes it's not yet it, it, it'll be up for a vote for a patreon exclusive so i mean eventually it could be eventually. something it could be something that that's voted on and that we have to watch uh but mm. Much, much to that distaste, this movie honestly really wasn't distasteful at all. It was actually, I feel, yeah, ne- nicely done, very, very well done, in all honesty. And I was confused with the time skip at first because you start off with a funeral and then it's it, it, it's like twelve years later, or not not twelve years. It's like a like a year earlier, but they don't tell you that, and you got to figure that out on your own. Well, no, they tell you. I remember them telling you. I I watched it dubbed, so uh, maybe yeah, yeah. Maybe they didn't show the caption of so and so many days, months, years earlier. Right. Okay. Yeah. No. That 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 could be it. I'll tell you. I I saw it both ways. I've seen this both ways, mm-hmm. and I'll I'll say this real quick. The impactful scenes that are meant to be impactful are not impactful at all in the dubs. It it oh. it felt like comparatively it felt like they just kind of phoned it in like all the all the moments where it was just like meant to be very weightful impactful or or meant to be fun or meant to be lighthearted or it, it just felt hey rick ha 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 blah 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 yay that's what it felt really? like to me yeah yes because I don't know, man. I mean, like we we've had this discussion before, and just something about the voice actors that they recruit for at Generic. least, yeah. Well, it's I mean, like honestly, anyone can get the job, but I'm saying, like, as far as home region voicing for Japanese, bro, they get down and dirty, dude. They, it, you have no idea what the hell they're doing inside there most of the time, and it could be anything. It could be, I mean. It feels like sometimes I swear, dude, someone just gets hired just so that way they can stab them for a, for a scene. <laughs> all right. Just straight up. It's like, oh, this scene's going to be murder. Let's hire this hobo over here and just murder him. And we'll record the sound. You know, that's horrific. It is horrific, but, it's, <laughs> you know, it, it, it kind of works. Yeah. I mean, I guess proof is in the pudding. And I, I assume we both like this. Uh, so uh, yeah yeah it makes sense proof you know don't don't judge the process trust the process yeah oh uh you know i mean like not much you could do about that though you know but honestly how it it really kind of starts off 
is it's really unique in that one it does start off with a with a death scene basically you know you're you have the the person and they're you're being given this monologue about how she's like the sunshine well in 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 the japanese version it's just like the her funeral was on a very dark and dreary day it was very rainy it was very dark unlike her personality and and who she was as a person which was very bright and sunny and bubbly and very very happy and embrace life so to speak Mm. and when you're first kind of like well is she was she like that it actually was you know and she was and you learn about the person you learn about him and you learn about her but when they do do backtrack uh they have the guy and he ultimately just sees this random book laying on the ground picks it up and reads it well i mean you are in the middle of a hospital and they don't want you to litter so, of course, you see something, you're going to pick it up. And, of course, you're going to leaf through it to try to find the owner. I mean, it's not your fault if you happen to read something completely horrifying, well, at least to your sensibilities. Well, to, to yours, your and my sen- sensibilities, yeah. But, I mean, like, if you look at the guy when he picks it up, dude looks totally happy when he starts reading it. Oh, he's into books. Yeah. He's like, oh, this is a diary. He flips it open. Oh, it's a book called Living with Death. That's cool. Flip. Oh, this is obviously someone's handwriting. Let me continue to read this because this is totally my game. Yeah. So so many stops in there. So many. It's fortunate that that the handwriting is so nice and legible, because if I ever wrote a diary, you're going to need a forensic team to figure out what I'm trying to say. Uh, linguists, no matter how, how much I attempt. You're going to need uh, linguists and, and people who, who are specialized in <laughs> In alien hmm. language, <laughs> that's what you're yeah. gonna. That's what it's gonna be. It's it's not even. Is that a, what he meant? No, it's not what he meant. That, How do no, you know? That, that 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 I just do. That's totally what he meant. That is totally what he meant. I don't know what you're talking about, man. Oh man, that is totally what he meant. Like, wait, what are you talking about? But on a serious note, like, so she's going through our main character. Sakura's or one of our main character is is going through this obviously hardship, this hard time, this this point in her life where she is literally given a death sentence. She's like, "You're dying. You're going to die. There there is no if ands or buts about this. You're knocking on death's door." And I don't know about you, but I sure as hell wouldn't be happy. I wouldn't be jumping around, and I wouldn't be going through like this. Is it's cool. I'm going to go ahead, continue to go to school. I'm going to do all this stuff and everything like that. Yeah, it, it's it's a complicated story that is I'm not going to say dumbed down, but it is definitely uh, it's brought to the human level, you know, and I thought it was quite interesting that even though our main character likes books, you never really hear his first name and until the end. It, well, yeah, until the end. But you find out there's a reason for it. He doesn't want to be, um, I guess, party to people's lives, if that makes any sense. He's rather he'd rather be an observer with a book than in some as a part of somebody's life. So in a sense, when he picked up her book and went on these wild adventures with her, it, it kind of saved him from being a loner. Well, yeah, yes and no. I mean, I mean, like he he kind of kind. Kind of got drug in into going on the adventures with her, and he got dr- you know basically kind of forced into it because he unwittingly found out about her secret when he read her book. You know, which yeah. I don't know about you. If that was my book and, and I was trying to keep something private, I would keep that on lockdown, not just like randomly forget it somewhere while I'm at you know. Granted, she was at the hospital. Yeah. The likelihood of him being at the hospital at that point in time to find said book is astronomically, unless you're in an anime, which this was, and this totally makes sense because that kind of thing happens. True. But the other thing is, is we never find out exactly what disease she actually has. We just know that she has oh. pink pancreatic disease. That's all they ever say yes. is pancreatic disease. Now, I did look up what the pancreas does, and, and if you have pancreatic disease, 
what potential diseases you could have. Um, diabetes is a strong one, very strong. Right. Um, I'm not quite sure if it's type one or type two. I think type two is food and type one is uh, not food, <laughs> I guess, for lack of a better word. Given the medication that um, she had, I highly doubt that it was <laughs> that it was diabetes. Well, when you freeze on in the purse, when and he finally reveals what's in the purse, there are syringes, there's pills, there's um, All stuff kinds like of that. Stuff. I thought maybe insulin. Well, there's, I thought maybe uh, that that was insulin. Yeah, but, um, but I've, I've never seen insulin in pill form. I well, I mean, not only that, it wouldn't be oh my life got cut in half or I have half the amount of time because you could live a pretty long life and not be knocking on death. Like, like if it was that her parents wouldn't be like, you're dying. What was me? You know, type of thing. Like, and, and she sure as heck would have told her best friend who she never told about, about it. And her dietary restrictions would have completely changed. Because she had even said uh, that her dietary restrictions never changed for it. That makes a little bit of sense. And, but she also does eat a lot of sweets in here. Like well, a crazy amount. She also eats a lot of organs, meat, and everything like that. She goes to all-you-can-eat buffets and drags him to it. He even says, yeah. why are you dragging me to all these all-you-can-eat buffets? I mean... Right now, I, I can only assume that she's going to all these all-you-can-eat buffets because she's dying from this yeah. disease that is not diabetes. I mean, you have a kind of point. Because, yeah, you're right. They never actually say it. Um, they just... I, I mean, like, I guess... Uh, I, I, I can understand. They're, like, purpose, purposefully keeping it ambiguous. They're They're trying to you know, build up that suspense between the two of them. So that way you're like, oh, this, this totally could happen. That's totally a thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Of course. I mean, sure. I don't know. I don't know. But when they're together and, and how the story is really starting off too, it just really kind of, it's like, why is he kind of going along with this? Cause he is totally cool with being an observer and, and him finding out being the happenstance I mean, I, I get it. She she even says like at first it was like kind of just like hanging around trying to make sure, you know, don't please don't tell people that I'm dying type thing. And mm -hmm. then it just I, goes farther and it ends up going farther uh, to where he actually starts opening up and and and, you know, developing basically he's starting to develop feelings for her. I would say I kind of agree. I mean, we touched on this before we spoke about it. Um not necessarily in the pre-show, but I did bring it up because I was like, hold on, this seems a lot like Stockholm Syndrome. But she remains a very constant in his life from nothing to to almost every day. And he even mentions um, in the movie that he's he, he doesn't have friends. He convinced his parents that he has friends, um, but it was a lie to get it to 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 help his parents not worry. And it's even mentioned in the show, or in the movie, where he's approached and he's talked to him. He's like, you know, you, you, you won't worry a little too much about what people think about you. And, and you try to distance yourself from the bigger picture because you want to be seen. Um, how do they say it? No, they didn't say you want to be seen. You distance yourself from the bigger picture. Because you want to have um, your own perception of how people see you. Because how he yes. how because his discussion is like well how do you know people because that's what I am assume, assuming like that's that's what I want and so she's like your hobby how you like to spend your time uh, aside from reading obviously is to fantasize or think about how people really think about you what do they really think about you like what is what does you know Kyoko think about me right. What is what is mm -hmm. what does she really think about me? And you know you can't help but like well I mean like you can't help but think that she's a uh, that he that you know that he's a weirdo because he is kind of a weirdo you know yeah more than just kind of but yeah no I just figured nerdy I figured bookworm I figured straight A student which came with the territory <laughs> true true 
Uh, but also, it kind of, you know, you, you also learn more about him, right? So they go on mm-hmm. this on this trip, and you find out a lot about him. But also, you find next to nothing meaningful about him. Where where they're when they're in the hotel together and they're talking and they're communicating. One, he mm-hmm. finds out like how serious her disease is, and that's when it really kind of hits home for him. You know, in that yeah, because he. Because he found the the medicines. Yes. Now, what I thought was kind of cool, personally, um, do you know how to play Truth or Dare with a deck of cards before Uh, this movie? No. Yeah. I didn't think there was such a game without or with a deck. I thought it was just, hey, Jack, Truth or Dare. And then you tell me one or the other. And it'll just keep going till one of us goes, I can't do it anymore. And then point goes to the, the ask E. Right. If you will. Or I can't do this or I won't do that or I won't answer that or this and that. But this is it's like how how they played it was interesting and it was with the deck of cards and it was a finite number. Like True. It's like, okay, who's who's asking the questions? Whoever has the highest number. You're the one that gets to dole it out. So you're it's like truth or dare. Oh, I don't know. Just, I'm gonna choose truth because I'm you know, I don't want to do a dare. So the thing about her <laughs> is she kept asking questions about like who do you find cute who's cute to you who do you find attractive like like trying to get his go trying to get him embarrassed and everything like that whereas if his is his were more like i want to know more about you tell me about about you like what was your child there are more like? questions she said there was a lot like an interview but there are also questions that i would have never thought of personally it never crossed my mind because tw- truth or dare it's more childish, more adventurous, more uh, experimental is not the right word, but like you test the boundaries of what, what, who you're with and what they're willing to do or say in the, in, in, not necessarily to save face so much, but to one up the other person, you know, and he or comes to, through with, or, or, or to get to know them in a, in a very particular way or in a certain aspect more so than, what I would ever, what I would ever think to, to do, you know. Fair enough. But what would you have done in in his situation? I don't know, man. I mean, like it's easy to it's easy to say that I would do X or I would do Y. But honestly, being in that situation, especially with someone, especially after he he opens up the bag, and it's like, oh shit, this is real. It's like this ain't like oh she's like got she's a little ill no like straight up she is she is ill death's door yeah yeah it's like hi uh grim reaper how you doing uh please keep mm-hmm. trucks away from me so that way i don't get hit anytime soon and and get isekai and whisked away into the wonderful world that could be there <laughs> uh by all means yeah. by all means just please. sending me to a wonderful world where i have to eat the meat of animals in order to improve my own body it's like all Where I want to do. Where have I heard do, that premise before? All I want to do is eat delicious food. Which, so I like how she took the she, and it's stated in the very beginning. She's like, "I want to eat your pancreas." Jokingly, obviously, she says it jokingly. The title of the movie totally misleading. I want to eat your pancreas. I thought it was going to be like she's not human and she actually just has to eat pancreases to continue to live, or is she that's just what she does or he does. It's like it's going to be like a zombie type thing, and that that, that was my expectation just from the title alone. And it is it, it was not that by any stretch of the no, word. Not even a little bit. Not even <laughs> close. To that. I wasn't expecting a zombie show, but I also. I, I was more thinking Hannibal Lecter, you know? E- yes. I guess. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, eh. what I, I mean, was really shocked by was can- the morbid cannibalism. I mean, there's. Mm, I mean, no, nah, it wasn't morbid cannibalism, but eh, no, they, they didn't even do that there. No, the, it was the morbid curiosity or the morbid um, fascination with someone about to die. He wanted to know every facet of her life, who she was in her own opinion. You know, but, and she wanted him to ask, you know, what her measurements were to dare, maybe see her naked. I, I don't know. And then as they progress through the night, they, they start drinking alcohol, which 
I'm not quite sure you're supposed to do in high school. No. I mean, the drinking okay, age, no. the drinking age in Japan is 20. I mean, if if I've learned anything from anime, it's their drinking age. Mm. Cuz it's all <laughs> yeah. the time. We're in, I'm not 20. I'm not 20. I'm not 20. Uh, you know, they also have some like laws and everything like for depictions and things like that. However, they never specifically or explicitly say that they're drinking. It's just heavily insinuated. Oh, they they were hardcore drinking. Hardcore drinking. In the in the he even takes a sip and goes, Oh, what's this? And shrugs. Yeah. But yeah. They never explicitly say this. And 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 to my knowledge, to my very limited knowledge, they can't openly state that they were drinking in this in the at least in the show because it's I guess there's like a censorship law or a law saying that you can't depict under eight people underage doing something highly illegal that you're not supposed to do or something like that I don't know I don't know rumor rumors amok of what I've heard because you never really see people underage willingly drinking uh like that heavily yeah I mean are you sure though no <laughs> no um it's just one of those things that it's it's accepted, but it's it's not really easily publicly accepted. You know what I mean? Like behind closed doors, like for instance, over here, um, my first sip of beer was like at four, four or five from my parents. And, you know, here it's not that they're like, we've got like a convenience store around the corner that'll sell because because and right. coffee comes out of. It, it, instead of coffee coming out of a store, it comes out of a vending machine. I'm sure beer does too. And you, you don't have to swipe your ID to be able to be like, I'm of age. Right. Yeah. I, I get that. I, I truly do. But I'll tell you, I'll, I'll say this. The drinking in general was just like kind of, kind of a side aspect of it. And it's not it's not not even that big of a, a focal point for it, right? What it is is it's just kind of like her way of letting loose, checking off things off her off her list to be able to continue on with whatever it is she's trying to do, which is check things off her bucket list. And she does have a bucket list. You even find out that she has a bucket list from her book. But while they're in the hotel in the hotel playing truth or dare you 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 find out that her dares while while she's drinking more are getting more and and more uh like risque type like granted she can't really walk she's so hammered she's she's so inebriated that she can't really walk and she even says it's like truth or dare and he goes you know, it's like, I'll tell you both my truth and dare. And so he ultimately chooses the, chooses the dare. And she's like, no, you have to princess carry me to the bed. <laughs> he's like, yeah, she's like, no, 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 no. I'll, I'll walk you to the bed. And my legs don't work. All right. I'm dead. I'm dead in the water. My legs are dead to me. All right. You have to carry me. And then for the final one, for the final truth or dare, he takes the dare instead of the truth where they, she says, you have to sleep in the bed with me. Like, you can't be on top of the covers. You have to sleep under the covers. You have to sleep in bed with me. And that's ultimately what he does. Granted, their backs are to each other. They're they're not... It's very innocent. It, it is 100% innocent. 100% innocent. And her friend, though, on the other hand, uh, mm -hmm. is... is uh, uh, Very much otherwise. Well, she, 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 she ain't happy that her friend just straight up went ahead and lied to her parents. And then not only that, went to another town and on top of that, went to another town with a bo with the boy who she is claiming they ain't dating. It's like, I don't know what to tell you, but we 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 ain't dating. We we just uh, we just chilling. We're friends. We're hanging out. Stuff. We're going we're going out to eat. That's all we doing. We're not doing anything else. We're just going to buffets. Who doesn't like buffets? I like buffets. On the daily. All the time. All day. Every day. Buffets. <laughs> but what's funny yeah. is is there's this guy. I when when he first came into the into the scene, um, I could have swore. I could have swore he was like, 
uh, gonna end up being Sakura's boyfriend, uh, Issei, the the dude with the blonde hair, the one that's always offering gum. Yeah, yeah. I thought yeah, for sure guy. he was like he was the one that was Sakura's boyfriend yes. that she had broken up with. That we don't know why they yeah. broke up. We just know that they broke up. But it ends up being like the guy that lends her the the CD instead. And and yeah, like, it was a very odd interaction, especially for like someone who recently broke up. He probably held out hope or something, something like that, and getting back with her, not not realizing that uh, you know she's uh, she's already moved on. She's uh, she's she's moved on to greener pastures. Is what she's done. You know, sounds like you say she died, but <laughs> no, not <laughs> I mean, quite, eventually. not yet, not, not yet, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Well, so to backtrack a little bit so you can kind of understand her personality, um, you find out earlier on, like much earlier on, that she ends up not really following social norms. Um, Big Fat, for instance, uh, one of the first interactions that they come across that, that someone's making a fuss is a guy's riding a bike in an area you're not supposed to ride a bike in, bumps into an old woman, she spills something, I assume, and he's like, hey, I'm going to need money to clean this up. It's your fault. Cough it up. And she runs in there full bore and is like, you're in the wrong here. You're doing this. You're doing that. If you look over here, you'll see that it says no bike riding. And then she full on like field goal soccer kick. I don't know what you want to call it to the nuts. And in the English dub, it's hilarious because some of the older people are in the crowd. They go, ooh. That was a full kick. Probably broke both of those. <laughs> yeah, no, they they had their uh, they had their moments in there. That's that's for sure. They definitely had their moments, uh, both in the sub yeah. and the dubs. Uh, but it's not a matter of like doing social norms or anything like that. It's it's more so along the lines of I like, figured it was like living with no regret. Like if I see a problem that can be fixed, wh- why don't I? You know, why don't I? And it it, is you can. Uh. Well, no, I kind of figured it was more more closely associated with the fact that you got nothing to lose. So why not do the right thing? True. True. true, true, true. She could have turned a blind eye to that. She could have walked away. She could have. Which is what what everybody else was doing. Absolutely. He did not want to be involved. Yep. He, He was very much so a I really don't want to be here right now. Because I'd rather be in my book. I'd rather be anywhere nose but deep here. in a good book. Any, yeah, anywhere but here. And growing up, books for me were a form of escapism. And I have a feeling heavily it's the same for him. Yeah. So that's why he loves books so much. And then he becomes a librarian just to feed his habit, you know? Yeah. No, I, I, I get that. He, I understand that. And you can absolutely tell he he takes his job very seriously. He takes his job. Um, I don't think he loves it so much as it just gives him the opportunity to be around more books, you know? Well, not only that, it, it gives him an opportunity to be an observer without actually having to truly interact with people. It's They come up, grab the book, or he checks it out, checks it in, away mm-hmm. they go. You know, uh, granted, that kind of changed. When, when she, uh, volunteered there. Yeah. And did she ever get paid? Do you think or no? No, there, it's a volunteer. That's, it's, it's vol- voluntary. You volunteer your time. You think, did he ever get paid? Uh, uh-huh. I didn't see him collect a paycheck, but I also didn't see him being short on money all the damn time. Yeah. Especially I was going to say, them. he didn't, I mean, I mean good to get out. eating everywhere. Yeah. I'm like, where are these teenagers who supposedly don't have a job? full-time students, where are they getting all this extra disposable income from? Uh, well, I can only assume that she's getting her extra disposable income from her mom and dad because, you know, she's dying. I was just was sad that she's about to die. Yeah. You're like, yes, of course. And, and, and what's, what's sad is like, they, she even says like, yeah, every time I tell my parents, I want to do something, they, basically just agree while fighting back tears. Like, I want to go shopping. All right. Have fun. Take it easy. Pretty Here's much. Money. I'm, I'm sure they're like yeah. taking a big old <laughs> wad of sweaty cash and they're like, pop, go, but come back. 
<laughs> be, be sure to be there on time, please. We, 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 we want you to come home. All right. But, uh, you know, so, I mean, I mean it, it, it's 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 ultimately a great movie, though. I mean, it's a touching movie. It's it's way beyond what I was expecting, way beyond what I was expecting. But knowing you, I kind of understood what I was going <laughs> walking into, for lack of a better phrase. This is my first time seeing it, too. So, I mean, it, it's thank you, Angel, from and uh, greetings from from the U.S. to you in Chile uh for this wonderful recommendation i mean like this honestly like th- this like all, a lot of the other ones that you have given us have been really great w- wonderful honestly and i'm not gonna argue with it i'm not gonna complain about this one that's for sure no uh no. I, I do suggest you just kind of watch this s- the subs over the dubs because subs are better than dubs in this case in this dub, case yes yeah because in subs as you were saying before, it, it it gives you a little bit extra oomph in the feels and in the meaning, whereas with the American or the dubs, it, it just, while I disagree, I don't feel like it was phoned in. I think that there was just a simple lack of experience or a lack of It was a lack of emotion. Understanding. It was a lack yeah. of, I mean, it's not a matter of a lack of understanding. You, you uh, like, it's it's not a matter of lack of understanding, right? It's it's a matter of you being able to go, yes, this is a very heart wrenching moment, and this is this is going to be it, right? Because I mean, your clue mm-hmm. one should be when he opens up the book and you see there, and he vocally says, "Living while dying," <laughs> for the title yeah. of her diary in the first five minutes. I mean, like your immediate emotion shouldn't be, oh, yeah, that's cool. You should understand this is going to be a very touching emotion. The guy has to be emotionally deaf, but you have to grow with him and you have to show that they did not show that. Like as the as the show or the movie went on, like he got more expressive. He got more involved, like he he grew to to want to be with her to where he actually tells her like, I want to be with you. Like I I want you to survive. I want you to live. I want you to take care of yourself. I want to be around you. Like, how is that not? I mean, like, yeah, that's not a sad scene, but that's a touching scene. I mean, like you, you see in a guy who literally wanted nothing to do with her, nothing to do with anyone grow to be like, I I want you to survive. I want you to live. I, I want, I want to be able to, to be with you for this. You know, I want to, I want to, I want to see you grow. And I mean, it felt like that whole scene in the dubs was just bleh. I want you to survive. Bleh, 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 bleh. It, it didn't, it, it didn't feel like he was in love. It felt like he was in like, he, and he liked the fact that he was able to have somebody outside of his family, outside of his, his non-existent friend group to interact with. It felt like he was. He was opening himself up to be more, more available for her. And the, I believe it eventually grew into the fact that she, he was like, I might love her a lot. Well, it, it's, I'm, I'm not even talking about it. I'm like, yeah, I get it. It was like, at first it was that. But when you get to the scene, the fireworks scene, like that's, that's what it was. Like the dude straight up embraced her, pulled her in and embraced her. He's like, I want you to live. It's like, I want you to be, I want you to be okay. Like seeing you in the hospital, uh, just talking with you, just being like that, just like straight up. It, it's like, it's like really starting to really starting to hit home. Like what the hell's happening? Like the medication, seeing the medication was, was one thing, you know, seeing it just kind of helped drive that home a little bit more, but then seeing you in the hospital, just like, holy shit. And they only ever gave her an IV that we saw. Of. I mean, that we saw. Come on, she's 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 in there and she's on an IV drip. Yeah, for for whatever is going on with her. But that's all we Pancreas see. We don't see disease. Yeah, we don't see the other medications or anything else that's actually going on with her. So, I don't know. Without without giving too much more away, without really going in, into the to the ending of it. Well, 
what I will say, I'll go a little bit, but not much. It's not what you think. It doesn't play out the way that you're expecting it, or the way that that you're hoping. You know? Hey, we'll talk about this in the. We'll we'll talk about that <laughs> in the post show. <laughs> Yeah, we'll All talk right. about it in the post show. I'll explain myself. Uh, we'll we'll talk about that uh, talk about that in the post show. But but regardless of of how you feel, think, or anything like that, like on a on a scale of up to ten, sir, because I feel like this is a great spot to to leave a rating. Um, I agree. My rating for this it had wonderful music, the orchestra, I, I, just beautiful. The sim the the way that they were able to enhance the scenes with the music, the visual, uh, just amazing colors, the the crisp, clean edges of the picture, the way that everything flowed together, the story, the uh, the dubbed characters' voices may have had a little bit of a lackluster performance, but in spite of that, it's still really good. I'm going to give it a nine. Okay, I'd recommend it to anybody who has a heart and yeah i really really liked it i will be watching it again yeah no it, it, it's definitely definitely worth the watch uh, i i gotta agree with you i gotta go with a nine on this one i can't go with a i can't go with a full 10 um i mean like because some of the lines just really didn't jive with me it didn't really mesh well with me some of the lines some of the some of the key scenes uh but mm-hmm. it you know, among a couple other things, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, but I'm going with a nine and fair enough. So next week mm-hmm. it is a random choice. Okay. And, uh, what we're going to be watching or rather talking about next week is going to be outlaw star. Oh, 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 oh. that's a good one. It's that's great. a real good one. It's a great one. It's a, it, it's, it's What's a, it like 24 episodes, 24 episodes. Exactly. I gotta look be, that up. Actually, Outlaw Star. It, it's gonna be great, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna love revisiting it. I mean, I don't know, man. I'm feeling a little nostalgia. I need something a little bit more nostalgia and a little bit different from what we've wa- been watching lately. And I feel like this is a great great leap into it. You know why not? So we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be watching Outlaw Star. Well, with yo, that, I don't think I've seen this. I might have seen. No, I've seen it. Some. I've seen some. Okay. Well. That's all the time that we have for today. (laughs) Uh, If you feel like we got something right, something wrong, did it too much justice, didn't do it enough justice, or anything else, uh, feel free to reach out to us at featuredanimepodcast at gmail.com, at those anime guys on Twitter. Uh, Feel free to talk to us inside Discord. A link for that's going to be in the show notes. Uh, We do have a Patreon, patreon.com slash featuredanimepodcast. Last week on Arafrota season two, we actually did continue on a conversation. We went into more depth, more detail about things that we for that we remembered after the fact. So if you want to catch a part of that conversation, uh, which I don't know, I feel like is a pretty tasty part of the conversation, patreon.com slash future mm-hmm. anime podcast. But keep in mind, we do talk a lot about the ending over there uh, in that. And uh, we do have an affiliate link for for those who are interested in buying the movie, buying this movie or anything else. Uh, we do have affiliate links for you inside the description of uh, click on that. Go ahead, buy something. It doesn't have to be the movie. It could be honestly anything. Uh, we do get a little bit of kickback from that. If that's how you choose to support us, we appreciate it. We also have a store shop dot featured anime podcast dot com. Uh, buy yourself some swanky swag. And until next time, I'm Jack. I'm Rick, and we'll see you next time.